Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast. Providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today and become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at p-o-d-g-o dot c-o. And be sure to add our podcast in the How Did You Hear About Podgo section of the application. Ideals like peace, freedom, and justice, they get packed up, but we can all go home. Well, I'm not going home. I'm going to get on my boat, and I'm going up river, and I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass so hard that the next bison wannabe is going to feel it. Now, who wants to go home and who wants to go with me? Welcome to the Rated G for Gamers podcast, episode 277. Before we start the show, we want to thank all of our wonderful fans who have supported us. And if you want to show support for the Rated G network, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Rated G for Gamers. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Rated G for Gamers. And finally, please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. We appreciate it all the love i'm your host dave rutino and this is my co-host dan the podcaster formerly known as classic robinson what's going on man e3 we, we 20, did it we did 21 it. is over it's, it's done over. it's done we did it we lived through it it wasn't as busy as as the e3 2019 and 2018 right not like not last year but we did it it was a lot of press conferences not yeah. everyone was an actual press conference. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, not every, you're right. Now, I'm looking at you, Bandai Namco. <laughs> I was going to say Capcom, but uh, or but you're right. 2K wasn't even a press conference. That was like I mean, a, throw a dart. That was it. Yeah. That was a that was a Ted that was a Ted talk. 2 2K um, was, it a was a TED good talk. To be fair, it's a good Ted talk, but not something that you would think would be at an E3 sort of, you know, event, right? Like that's something you would have at I would say, you know, during like a like a uh, like the dice the, awards or like a dice yeah, or, like or, a dice or awards. GDC or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not E3 E3 yeah. towards you know investors and and retailers you would think you know you want to show exciting games not have yeah I mean diversity I, talk I I get what they wanted to do and typically they don't showcase stuff at E3 that's really not their jam they're a big enough company they just say whatever they do what they want. So I don't know. I guess I guess we were fools for expecting them to have like a game showcase, but I was I was expecting the next Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto game. But come it's on, it's about was I time. Too much was it's expecting about too time? much. Well, you know, I mean, you, we 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 technically got the PS5 port, right? That's a thing. We did. <laughs> so we did. You know, it happened. It just, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna say we did three shows. We did the second. Sh the second show, we were pretty tired. We were, yeah, we did the yeah. X, which was the Xbox show. I mean, it's. I mean, it was. It was. It was definitely a long. Yeah, it was. It was a long day. <laughs> it was I think. Day. I think. I think we set a record for how many times we said this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're not. You're not. You're not wrong, Ben. All right. So look. So look. Look. Let's do an E3. 2021 recap the best of e3 2021 that's what mm -hmm. this show is all about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if for any reason i say this is super cool or you say this is super cool the other one has to call it out and as punishment for saying it you gotta say you would say super mario world is the best game of all time oh if i, I say it 
If I say it, I'll say Super Mario World, Super Mario Three is the best game of all time. I did if not agree to this. Cool. I did you not can't agree say to this. Super cool. You can't say super cool. I did it's not agree to this. Way. I did not it's, agree to this. It's the only way we can we can strike this from the vocabulary. I think I think that's I think that's your issue. I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right, breast of the wild. I mean, you already said it about three times already, right? I have not said it nope. once this whole I, I'm entire. Just, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making sure you we can't say this is super cool. I'm I, just I don't sure. know. I we'll be good. We'll be good. I mean, I can, I can, I can speak at length about how most of the uh, conferences were kind of a snooze fest, but yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> I talk about what's not super cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ubisoft was boring, but at least they came with games, unlike uh, unlike 2K. That's right. Like, uh, Square, their event was their, no, their event was you know okay, right? Mm -hmm. Capcom, I mean, they brought uh, literally a 3DS game and 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 esports. That's essentially what they had. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I thought, I thought we... Oh, god. I was just gonna say E3 2021 was pretty much Microsoft, Nintendo, or Bust. They were they were the highlights, for sure, yeah. And, and you know, we're going to kind of run through the highlights of every conference um, and kind of, you know, let you know yeah, our but... picks, you know. The, 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 the things that were big enough to excite us or the things that were big enough to make a splash on the internet, I guess, right? Because there well, was some I, stuff I... that came out of this. I don't really care about the internet. What we were excited for, right? Because mm. we, we're going to go through EA. They started everything. They kicked everything off. We're going to talk about Summer Games Fest. <clears> Ubisoft <throat> presents the Xbox Showcase. Uh, Nintendo. Square. And then we're going to show some love to Limited Run. Because we're collectors, too. Right? So that's... <laughs> no, they, had a good, they had a good conference. So we have to talk about that. They had a good conference, right? They, they so had a better conference than Capcom. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's jump in it. Let's jump into it. And let's just start with EA. Okay? Let's start off with EA. EA showed off Battlefield 2042, right? Like, we know this is coming out October 22nd. Mm -hmm. uh, the big, I want to say, the big highlight for this is they're going to double their player count to, you know, from uh, Battlefield 5 to 128 players. Right, so um, what, there was 64 in Battlefield 5, I think, was the max player count for, uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for, the big, uh, for the big maps. 128. The largest, mm. the largest player count, I think, in a game. But not if you're playing on a PS4 or Xbox One. So if you're playing on last gen, those versions won't support 128 player matches. I think the biggest thing for me was there's no single player game. There's no single player campaign in this game. So that already you're out. Know, disqualifies me. You're out. I'm not, I'm not out. spending the seventy dollars for the PS5 version. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, yeah. I'm out of that. Uh, but what do you? What did you think about the Battlefield reveal? I mean, we did get okay. So during the EA event, I didn't think much of it because it was all kind of. They said it was an engine, but there was no gameplay. It was it was all kind of simulated. So when we got to the Microsoft, the Xbox conference, they actually showed gameplay of Battlefield so I'm like okay now I get a better idea of what the gameplay looks and like. And it looked impressive it looked mat. it looked epic. It did look good I, I will, it did look good it, look, it, it looked did really look good. good I mean I love the the in-game cinematic trailer or whatever I was I was hype so you know I'll probably give this a go because it's like it's it's near future so you know you get some tech that's kind of right around the corner stuff that we may see in our lifetimes which is like kind of cool it's not like super far future with lasers and proton cannons and all that. So, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to pick it up, but if there's a demo, I'll certainly try it. I'll see how it is. Uh, I'm down is, for some 128 player multiplayer. This is a game that would benefit more so if it was <laughs> part of Games Pass, right? Like, oh, and, yeah, this, sure. If this sure. was Games Pass, 100, percent this would benefit. I can't see people spending seventy dollars for the next you know for the next gen versions to have just a multiplayer experience to play 128 players. Like I just I just can't see it. They did it with honest. Battlefield uh not a Battlefield. They did it with uh, Call of Duty Black Ops four. Sixty dollars. That, that was multiplayer 60, only. Sixty dollars and that was two years ago. Can you yeah. see people who don't have PS fives or, or Series X's uh -huh. right now because it's hard to get. 
Well, they're gonna uh, they're gonna have a sixty dollar version, right? Because the next gen ones gonna, are the ones that they will have a last gen version. But remember, those those, those players don't get to be don't, they're not counting in the hundred and twenty eight uh, player. Sixty four is still pretty substantial. Like you can have a big battle with that. You know, you can you could it's not as impressive, sure, but you can make that happen. Um, yeah, I, I mean, don't know. you know, some some games I, some games do hurt from it for sure. You know. I just I just don't know how well this is gonna sell. In October, right mm-hmm. when we we know we have Call of Duty coming, we don't know when it's coming. They haven't shown it off yet, but it's it, it's definitely coming. Yeah, and another yeah. game that will you know that was shown at the Xbox showcase, right? That we'll talk about later on. I think, mm-hmm. you know, I think they're gonna have to think about what they're gonna do with Battlefield. I just don't think this is gonna work. Well, uh, I mean, Titanfall wait, wait. definitely took a hit for not having single player, right? Part two did a lot better. Not enough to continue the series, but it was better because it had single player in it. So I think I think that's a good case. But that's also that was also a, a new franchise, right? People didn't really know what it was, so that's a little harder. Battlefield has been around since the, the late nineties, you know. I know, but we have Apex Legends, mm-hmm. right? We have Fortnite. Sure. Those two are really going strong. Sure. Call of Duty always does gangbusters, and mm-hmm. we haven't even heard about that yet, right? That's mm-hmm. not that hasn't been revealed. Um, and then we're going to, you know, again, another small game you probably heard of that came out during the Xbox showcase. We'll talk about that <laughs> a little bit later. That's mm-hmm. another game that's, you know, that's probably going to put a damper on this. I just I don't mean, know. How competition's going to be competition's going to be. Yeah. 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 You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And paying $70 for this game, this probably would have benefited a little bit more if it had a uh, next gen version, obviously, if it would have had a campaign. Uh, mm-hmm. Even if the campaign sucked, at least you would you would you would have suckered people in. To I spend mean, seventy dollars. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, if you're saying a one Dan Robinson would have bought a copy, the answer is yes. <laughs> I would have bought a copy. You're I right. Definitely there would've. you go. Campaign you go. sucked or not. I mean, you know, I would have tried it. You're, right, right. You would at least see what it's about. But the EA event wasn't an actual presentation for you know from you know it just wasn't a pre it was just it was just battlefield uh, it was battlefield it was just it was just battlefield so let's go to the actual start of e3 or e3 season mm-hmm. and that is jeff Keeley's summer games fest he had a lot of surprises a lot of games he had jeff goldblum which you know i love him and i can't wait for the next jurassic park or jurassic world movie mm-hmm. but uh two of my biggest highlights from Summer Games Fest right. was first Death Stranding. We got the director's cut. It was announced for the PS5, and that was all. We don't know anything else about this. They said we'll it find was... out in the next couple of weeks, which yeah. you know, obviously everyone's thinking we're going to get a state of play in the next couple of weeks because of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. Yeah, we were kind of rumoring, or the rumor was like Sony's going to do something soon. So this will definitely be there. Um, do you have any? you have any thoughts on what the director's cut would be? Because I got some ideas. Well, it's still funny because, you know, I thought Kojima left Konami just so he could put out his director's cut, which would be, you know, the game. But Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say we're going to have more missions. I don't know how many we're going to have. You know, it's going to be sort of DLC like. Right. And they will. The missions will be Metal Gear inspired. Type oh, you you think stealth. you think I think, you think I think he's going all in. I think he's going all in on that. Oh, see, I I disagree. I think he was taking a jab at Konami. Like, look, wow. that's in the past. We're doing we're doing something new. You know, I mean, maybe you're right. That'd be awesome being able to like sneak around like that instead of just doing the the mountain traversal. I, I think he's paying homage to mm-hmm. Metal Gear more so than he's taking shots at Konami. I think his thought process or i think his really you know like i think konami is in his rear view mirror i don't think he cares anymore about them i think he's more so like you know what i can't make a metal gear game so i can make a metal gear inspired type game by using a dlc of this of death stranding right especially if the next game is sort of a horror game that he's making that metal gear <clears throat> you know ideas he, he probably had for metal gear probably wouldn't work but they would work mm. in death stranding so yeah maybe maybe I wonder if there's going to be uh, like, I mean, I guess I guess the new mechanics sneaking around and the whatever else would add a certain extraness to the game. 
Uh, but I, I think it's all going to be quality of life improvements to the gameplay mechanics, the extra missions, like you said. And depending on how many, depending on how many, uh, <laughs> how many FedEx packages he has on his back, he's going to be able to hide in a box when people come around. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's going to be able to sneak it hide in the box. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't get the oranges. Why oranges? Right. Because it's, like, it's the just, presentation in the presentation. It's just he funny. Had a, he took a box and he turned it upside down and dump out the oranges it could have been anything why yeah. oranges who who in a warehouse has oranges just sitting in a box maybe they're uh maybe they're like a, a produce shipping warehouse it could be it's it's okay. just as valid as having like a box full of diapers or nails or i don't know cameras or whatever how about just, I just thought foam. it was funny it's just boxes of foam it's just it could a box be. full of foam you know it could oh. have been anything all right so that that was cool mm. but uh, jeff keely ended the showcase with something that we haven't seen since originally e3 2019 and he everyone's the been one asking more for yeah. and that's elden ring and yep. we not only got we not only got a trailer for that in gameplay we actually got uh, a release date of January 21st, 2022 is the first big game being released next year. We got a full release date. It's, I think there's a, like a, another Pokemon spinoff that's coming out like a week later. <laughs> funny mm -hmm. enough. Um, and this, we got a lot of gameplay. It's a standalone store. You know, it's, it's, it's the main character who seems, I think the name is tarnished, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the, the name of the main character is tarnished. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, again from from software. So it's going to be Souls like. It's going to be super difficult to play. What do you think? What did you think about the reveal? Well, the thing that I want to know is like, what is the difference between this and Dark Souls, right? Like even like looking at Story. Bloodborne. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, looking at like Bloodborne from the outside, right? Like. Um, Bloodborne is different because one of them is, uh, one of them is like, uh, rolling dodges and the other one's like blocking, I think is kind of the main mechanic. Like you got to wait for the opening and all that. So there's some like fundamental gameplay differences there. Like story wise though, and aesthetically they look similar. It's hard to tell, you know, they're, they're kind of one and the same. So Elden Ring is new. Sure. Story, right? You got the JRR. Uh, not J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, George R.R. R. Martin helming the kind of backstory and the lore and the universe and all that. Like, he was kind of, like, brought in uh, to kind of help flesh out the game world. So that's going to be really cool because that man's a master, right? Um, hopefully his... I don't know, does it count? Like... Wait, wait, you said really cool. I think that counts. Really cool, pretty cool? No, no, get out of here. Come on. That Get out of here. Uh -uh. Super Mario World is the best game of all time. I I didn't know I didn't agree to any of that. I know all you right. think I'll it is the best game. I'll of say all it time. for you. I'll say it for you. Oh, go, go ahead. It. Go ahead. I said so. It. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't I don't. I mean, if it's going to be a Souls like game, it's going to share some of the mechanics of of the Dark Souls series or the Bloodborne series. So. Well, um, okay. Let's 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 go in chronological order. We had Demon Souls. Right? right, it was a one-off, and then we had the Dark Souls trilogy that came out. Yeah, um, a little bit more story than the Demon Souls game, right? I and mean, Bloodborne, sure. yeah, and the Bloodborne kind of a story, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't know. I didn't really get past the first. The first. Neither did I. The first. Neither did I. It's not a. It's definitely not a game for me. Yeah, the first <laughs> monster that came out, I couldn't get past. Yeah, uh, Sekiro. People praised the story of Sekiro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So and said the storytelling, uh, you know, chops were definitely better in this yeah. game. Well, at so least I would say I would I would say there's some story. You know, I mean, come on. They got the guy who helmed Game of Thrones. Oh, I'm not I'm not saying war. there's not going to be a story. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess the world is going to be distinctly different than Dark Souls. But it's hard not to make the comparison because it's got you know, the high fantasy or the dark fantasy, right? And it's got similar color palettes and color tones. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I trust in Martin. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's very good. And the game has a release date. It is going to be the first big game of 2022. So it's coming out soon. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that at another time. But I think 2022 is going to be, maybe, if everything comes out and nothing's mm -hmm. delayed out of 2022, could be one of the best years in gaming. 
Yeah, right. I agree. So, all right. So, let's talk about the Ubisoft event at E3, and there weren't many things to highlight. I mean, you know, Just Dance had to be there, but I think the biggest thing for me. Yeah. If Just was, Dance wasn't there, was, the world would crumble. I know. Well, you know what? I think the world is crumbling because Just <laughs> not Dance, for the first time, not on the Wii. God knows how long it's mm-hmm. not coming out on the Wii. I think right? that was the biggest announcement they had. They I know. Like, now we're I, done with the Wii. For the first time, I didn't have to spend sixty dollars on a, a Wii game. <laughs> yeah, man. Because I just had to get the last game put out for the Wii. It's it's uh, it's speaking of that. It's it's so weird that they make it a part of every one of their conferences. It's either in the it's beginning big, or the middle. They pay a lot of money in the licenses for the songs, and it's a big part of their revenue. I I'm aware, it. but but it. nobody's nobody's surprised, and nobody's getting hyped for it. Right? People still might buy it. So the casual fans get out there, they play the game, you know, they buy the game. I think they, they do it just to troll. I think they do it just to troll people to see if it's coming out for the Wii. The Wii. Oh. Well, that, now it's not coming <laughs> it, out for either it, anymore. So it, it it probably won't come out for. The, it probably won't have it in their uh, it's 2022 just like, E3 press conference. It wins it, like the no do no award. It wins the no, no do award. It's, it's like come it's, on. We it's no it's not going to be uh, a question if it's going to come out for the Wii or Wii U next year. So they might as well not have it at the press conference. How about that? I mean, there you go. We we there know it's go. coming out for the Switch. Right. It's just like so. yeah. It's like it's like okay. We know it's coming. You know. Okay. But we did get a first look at the new Avatar game, right? We did in their their Snowdrop engine, you mm-hmm. know, uh, being made by Massive, mm-hmm. uh, you know, their internal studio. Uh, it, and we don't really know much about about this new Avatar game, other than it's going to be like a new standalone story. Mm-hmm. Right? You get to play as Navi, and you you, you go in this open world. Uh, adventure in Pandora, a place in Pandora that was, uh, mm-hmm. you know, never seen before in the movie. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say movies, but you yeah. know, there's only one movie officially out. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's this it's going the road of like Insomniac, right? Where it's mm-hmm. it's a Spider-Man game that's not related to the movies at all, and it's doing a brand new story. Yeah. It's not tied to the movies, which makes sense. That um, um because they you know have. They can do whatever they want, kind of, right? To a certain degree, they have. It's definitely going to help. Yeah, that they're not burdened to any timeline. They're not burdened to a movie plot in any way, you know. Um, my thing is, like, okay, yeah, it looked pretty, right? There's no doubt about it. It looked kind of beautiful. And they had a really slick trailer. But I just. I want to know who's hype for Avatar. Everybody's Avatar. hyped to see the movie. Everybody's hyped to see Avatar 2, the movie. The, nobody's hyped to see Avatar, the movie. It's a joke at this point. Like, even even the first movie, We're, it, it already, looked... You, can't, James Cameron already shot the, fir- the, the, the two sequels, two I, and three, back to back. I, I'm aware. It, are people going to see it? Yes. Is it going to make tons of money? Yes. Is it going to break box office records and probably be the top grossing movie of, like, all time? Yes. But it's still going to be a terrible movie. And no one's no one's gonna care to necessarily. Wow, play it in the world. it's true. The, Rotino over the here. first one, the first one was beautiful, but it was such a garbage story. It was terrible, and no one well, goes back I to mean, watch that I mean, movie. I mean, I mean, you talk about garbage story. It's you know people getting their land taken from them by you know the the people. Well, from the new world. no, 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 I mean, no. That's no. a story that's been told since the beginning of time. I, I mean, mean, I get all that. It's a unique it's, story. It's it's freaking dances with wolves. It's it's the Smurfs. It's Fern Gully. It's whatever. It's you know. It's I I get it. I get it. But I mean, it's such a basic movie. You know, there it wasn't that great. It was really like the visuals that were really bringing it to life. And we've seen that already eleven years ago. And now we're getting a game based on it. Like it's I don't know. It's 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 well, hard for me to get excited. Technically, we already saw a game based on it eleven years ago. That's right, and uh, it was terrible. <laughs> and now, and now they're going. And, and again, they're shifting focus from doing a movie that's, you know, doing a game that's based on the movie, and now doing a game that's based, you know, in the movie universe. More, universe yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. not based on the movie itself, right? Yeah, Where yeah. They, they take liberties with the story, and yeah. I think they have. This is where. 
this is where you know if you have good storytellers at your at your studio right because mm. you because mm-hmm. now you, you're taking an established franchise and making your own story out of it. right right that's true so that's true. and it's it's a good engine it was the engine that they did division two and we loved the division two the engine mm-hmm. i don't think there was anything wrong with it and and they definitely whatever they did to upgrade this engine uh that game looked amazing it looks right? pretty it, it looks could have been pretty. any game in this in this world and it would have looked amazing and yeah. i think i think avatar they they wanted to show it off they wanted to show the game off specifically but just because of the colors and the environment it really popped oh yeah so, yeah yeah 100 percent. i'm a little bit more optimistic for this game not okay. because of the ip but because of the engine i think if they put a decent story based in this engine and not make it destiny <laughs> Give me a single player experience. Uh, I, I, I yeah. think this could they could do something good with this. Yeah, that's 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 the thing. I, well, I don't know if they're going to do the fully single player experience because it's uh, Ubisoft. You know, they're gonna they're gonna have some sort of multiplayer component or some way to monetize it because that's their jam. Listen, they're not EA because okay, that's so their I'm jam. Having hope. I'm having hope they're not EA with the They're Star they're Wars. almost just as bad. <laughs> okay, so being just as bad doesn't make them bad. They're not Activision, right. they're I, not EA. So I'm, I'm holding out hope that they'll do. I can I can guarantee you you're going to be able to buy whatever the currency is in that game for real world money. I will make okay. a bet. <laughs> All right. I, I don't disagree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Just don't make it egregious. No. Well. So, but the biggest announcement I think they had and they did end the show with Avatar, but I don't think that was the biggest takeaway mm-hmm. from the Ubisoft conference. The biggest takeaway was the game that was leaked by Nintendo accidentally. <laughs> yeah, and that's big oops. Mario plus Rabbids, the sequel, which was Sparks of Hope. Mm-hmm. We got an that we got a reveal, and it's coming out in 2022. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed Mario plus Rabbids, the original. You hit me. You hit. Me I hyped you. To, I, 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 I I hyped you to it. Yeah, yeah. I said, I Dan, not, Dan would love this game. I was not at all. This game was not on my radar. I didn't want to buy it. I bought it. It was awesome. Well, I, I don't think I wanted to play a tactic style game. I don't think right? anybody realized it would be that good. They're like, what? It, what why? Why the rabbits? Why this? Like, it was a super corny. And Miyamoto. And for the original announcement, Miyamoto came on stage. He had the blaster in hand. He had the Mario uh, Cappy. Yeah, it was. And, it was kind of corny, but then. Once you once you the, start getting into it, it takes you the, minutes. It takes the you developer minutes to get into it. started crying when they, mm-hmm. you know, when they they, yeah. they 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 give a shot to him in an audience. I mean, they so have a I great thought, relationship, you know. If anyone's going to make uh, a team up game, it's going to be Ubisoft. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, Ubisoft is definitely, you know, they're they're they are behind with Nintendo. Like they're they're in the trenches with Nintendo, right? When mm-hmm. the Wii U came out, they put out exclusive stuff for the Wii. Yeah, we and initially, Wii U, yeah. and then they ported, it, and then they ported it. Well, for the Wii U, yeah, for the yeah. Wii U, and then they ported it to PS4 and Xbox eventually yeah. when the Wii yeah, U yeah. didn't sell. But they supported the Wii U, right? They're yeah, one of the yeah, only yeah. third parties that really support the Wii U. Um, so we got but the new, but the new good. Mario Plus Rabbits game uh, will focus sort of like on Super Mario Galaxy, yep. right? It'll be sort of that aesthetic because they're going to be in space. You're yeah. just taking Mario Plus Rabbits and just throw them in space. That's that's awesome to see sort of rabbit stars. <laughs> I just hope we get a Yoshi rabbit, right? Like that's what I want to see. They didn't they didn't show any Yoshi. Uh, I I fear that they won't because now they have Rosalina and the uh, the rabbit version of Rosalina, and then the little Luma like the star power ups are a new thing, so they combine with the rabbits. Um, we'll see. We did get some gameplay in like a teaser trailer. So we did get to see some of that stuff, which looked kind of cool. Some of the new powers and whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah. I am, uh, I am a super hype, even though it got spoiled ahead of time. I'm definitely buying that day one. Mm-hmm. Let's shift focus. <laughs> let's go to the heavy hitters, which were there are only two. <laughs> there are only two heavy hitters. Yeah. But let's, before we go to break, let's talk about the Xbox event because it was jam packed with little filler. Big, big, big. Lots of games, and they started the conference off with what was highly speculated. We speculated about it. I mean, Starfield, it's real. Yeah, it's from Bethesda. Yep, and it is exclusive to Xbox. Yeah, there's man. No, there's no more debate, 
right? It's going to be an Xbox exclusive. And we even got a window. It's coming out November 2022. 2022. So next year, Jason next, Schreier, next uh, holiday. Yeah. Jason Shire was right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Contributing say, to the contributing to my 2022, maybe the best year of gaming ever. Right, right. So right. the internet, so. the internet was was all up in arms over this. Everyone was upset. Why is it not coming to PlayStation? This and that. And every single every single reply was Spider Man, and that was essentially it. And they're like, well, it's Spider Man. No, well, well, Spider Man. Well, you know, well, te- I mean, well, it works technique. both ways. Well, I think. I think uh, I don't think the issue was everybody was upset. I think the issue was Todd Howard sort of, you know, apologized for it being exclusive, and then he deleted those tweets, right? Like I think that would I think that made it more of a story than anything. I at no point ever thought Starfield was going to be multi-platform. Yeah, I never thought. Well, that a lot of people whatsoever. did though, because it was in production and, ahead. Of, it was in. It's been in production for a long yeah, while, well and, before and while, they, uh, well before they bought. Uh, Microsoft bought them out, you know. And so, all of those people are morons. I'm sorry. It's it was I mean, never going to be multi-platform. Uh, it was as soon as as soon as Microsoft said, "I'm gonna write you a check for seven billion billion, not million, not million. If it was seven million, it would have been multi-platform. Seven billion dollars, mm-hmm. billion, billion. What are, you, are you, what are you doing? Your best uh, Doctor Evil over there? I'm doing my best Doctor Evil over here. I mean, they got to make their money worth out of it, right? Dollars. They got to make, make their their, that... they got to make their money's worth off of the off of the buyout. And Starfield is a way to get there. It's enough, not enough, but it's it's en- a start. It's enough a start. about the enough about the internet and more about the game, right? Mm-hmm. This game looks. This game is going to be a cross between Star, uh, Star Trek meets elder scrolls in my view mm-hmm. it's going to be elder scrolls in space everyone's everyone's saying skyrim in space all right everyone's but, saying skyrim in space but it's not like it's not like it's not like star wars right like 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 futuristic looking and you're in this sleek uh you know star you know you're not you're not in a sleek starcraft or anything everything looks like realistic space it has like, a you're in, big, you're in a big suit it has yeah. an alien isolation feel to it. That was yeah, kind of like 1970s space, right? Yeah. Well, you, I mean, even I mean, you know, no offense to NASA, but even 2021 space, you're in you're in a rocket that looks like it's a a, a realistic rocket. You're oh in, yeah. You're in the big space suit that you would be in now that the astronauts wear, right? You're not a right. Power Ranger with like a, a a tight space suit. Right. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. not like a Halo situation or anything like that. There's not like big power armor or or the Sentai suits where you're you know. You're in the sleek uh, silver spacesuit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so we know the aesthetic. We have a good idea of what the aesthetic is going to be like. We have zero information on what the gameplay is going to be like. They were, they were, they were very coy to not release any information about that. So your, that's your definitely world, something to look forward to. Your hope world is going to be a space station, and you're going to go to a different world, different planets, and stuff. That's going to be. I think that's going to be like it's going to be Elder Scrolls. You may just see you may just see a dragon in space. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's going to work out so well. Dragons need air too. I, <laughs> I have they a do. lot. Well, maybe instead of breathing fire, they breathe ice. I, I have a lot of confidence in this game because for seven billion dollars, I know seven point five. Ben, seven point five. Okay, well, keep, I keep forgetting, forgetting that point five billion. Five. Yeah, that point five don't mean nothing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Phil Spencer has seen this game. He knows what this game is, mm-hmm. and this 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 was like, you know what? We got to We got to We got to We got to just sign the check, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think you know. That's why I have supreme confidence in this game. I think this game is going to be awesome. It may not be a game for me, per se, but I think this game is going to be awesome because well, Phil Spencer's seen it. I mean. You didn't. You never really got into the Elder Scrolls games, right? Um, I played it on a Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to play it on Alexa. I didn't get a chance to play. It. The Alexa version is not really Skyrim. I mean, it is, but it's not really Skyrim. I know. I, know. Yeah, I, it's, joke, it's, I joke. I joke about. It's very different. I, I joke about that, but I did. I did play it uh, on the Switch, <laughs> and I, I I had a pretty good time with it on the Switch. I do have it for the for the Xbox One. I haven't mm-hmm. played it for the Xbox One yet. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking forward to jumping in 
like everyone else for the first time. And it's always intimidating when you want to jump into a game that everyone's been playing for like 10, for like a decade, right? And and have fond memories of. I mean, Elder Scrolls, isn't there an Elder Scrolls copy for the original Xbox? Uh, Elder Scrolls 3, yeah. yeah. And the, so, and the, uh, the DLC too. Yeah, so it's always intimidating to play a game that's been out like you know for decades well sure and it's got a huge amount of lore you know it's got game of thrones style lore in it right um this is now going to be their well there's five in the series plus all the offshoots but if you count those there's like nine or ten elder scrolls games in totality so when you see a five or a six or whatever next to it it's like woof, you know and starfield's going to be at that level right starfield's going to be at the scope or bigger than what Skyrim was because that's and, what they do. You know? And you know what the most important thing? It's going to be the first one. So I get to jump in and be an early adopter like everyone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit less intimidating in, mm-hmm. that, in that sense. Mm-hmm. On that same vein, <clears throat> less intimidating, first of its kind, and Xbox exclusive. Come yeah, on, man. Xbox yeah, bought Bethesda. They bought all the sister companies. Of mm-hmm. course, those games are going to be exclusive. We got another new IP at the Xbox showcase, and that is Redfall. Yeah, okay? closed by it out. Develop- yeah. By the developers of the of the Dishonored developers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Arcane closed Studios. Out the, closed out their show. Uh, um, brand new game, Vampires. Which well, is, it's coming out summer you know. 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an open world vampire shooter. Um, that's pretty much all we know. Would you were you impressed with the the trailer? Uh I was impressed enough to want to know more. So yes, <laughs> I mean well, you know it looked kind of cool. I, I want to see what the gameplay is like because that's that's really what's going to sell me on the game. The aesthetics look good. You know, I I, I thought it was kind of cool. It was a slick trailer. Um, I think it was more of Destiny meets Vampires, if you ask me. Right or maybe. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or outer worlds, right? Where uh, each it looks like the the enemies are vampires that have various you know levels of uh, powers, uh, and you can. You, it looks like you have four main player bases, and each player has their own set powers, just like you know, obviously Destiny or Outer Worlds. You know, you, you can have you know one person could probably like float in the air, fly, or other person is more of a ground attack person. So it looked in that vein. I don't know if this is a game for it me, could be. but it definitely yeah. looks super cool. I would love it to see be. gameplay. I mean, we're, we're definitely going to get this at some point, I think, later in a year or, or at one of the Xbox. You know, I don't know if they're going to do those week, those monthly Xbox events like they used to in the past. But oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing some gameplay. I don't know if this is a game for me because I think they're really doubling down on these multiplayer games for Games Pass. Right. Yeah, well, I I think you're right about the uh, uh, the kind of co-op situation and everyone having a role, and you can kind of choose them ahead of time and and play that way. Um, so that could be that could be that could be uh, kind of cool, you know, for sure. Okay. So the biggest thing everybody wanted to watch the Xbox event for, and that is Halo. Yep. And this is the game I said we were going to talk about a little later on in the show when we talk about the Xbox conference when we were talking about Battlefield early on in the show. Halo. We got to see Sizzle Reel trailer. Multiplayer is now free to play. Yep. Is, okay. Everyone was speculating they're going to have free multiplayer, and uh, they said, yeah. They now, said, they've yeah. confirmed. They've confirmed that this is still coming out holiday 2021. I still think it's going to be a November game. Make it Oh, 100 percent. Right there. 20th anniversary of Halo. Maybe the same day that Halo, the original Halo was released. Right. Like you so that would be no, November 15th, I believe. 2001. Yeah. Is you were the, saying that uh, last the year. That could be this year. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's I think that I think they're on pace for that. Um, I only care about the campaign, <laughs> obviously. I'm right? aware we got, we got zero we got, information about the campaign. Well, we got we got zero gameplay of the campaign, but That's we got what I some mean. story. Yeah, yeah. We got some story elements. I mean, you know, we get to meet the UNC, the, the UNSC, UNSC yeah. uh, AI called the Weapon, right? Mm-hmm. And she was created to help uh, stop or destroy kill. Cortana. She was, she was supposed to kill Cortana, right? And the the protocol goes haywire. 
There was, there well, was something yeah. that happens. We don't know what happened where Master Chief doesn't know what happened. And she's right. like, well, we were supposed to kill Cortana and she's not here. Right. We don't know what happened. So right. now we got to figure this out. So and it looks like the weapon was uh-huh. supposed to go away. Like that was the thing. Like the weapon, like she was supposed to shut down after her mission was done. Um, not the case. Well, she cool. will be your new AI companion. Right. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it's just the three of you. Uh, hey, Master Chief, the weapon. We don't have a, a formal name for for her yet, and the pilot, which we don't have a formal name of. Oh, so, well, our pilot's expendable, man. He is in that opening scene, and that's it. <laughs> I I disagree. I think he's no. going to be a vital part of no. of your of your mission because he's going to be flying you around. I think to different parts of the universe. Oh he, no no no! Chief was already outside of that. Vehicle. He was already flying through space. He was out of that ship pretty quick. Well, the actual was, uh, press cold. release, the actual press release said mm-hmm. it's 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 the weapon chief and the pilot. Really? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So okay. so definitely maybe that's... He, he's going to be a vital piece to the the campaign. Maybe that's the maybe that's the hub where you kind of use the to space to pelican or whatever it is, right? Cuz cuz the rumors are that it's going to be open world. You can do different missions. You can play how you want to play. There's a probably like an overarching goal. You need to do this and get here and hit these switches and, but all this other cool stuff you can do in the middle. Um, okay. So yeah. And then in terms of like the multiplayer, I don't know if you saw the, um, like the deep dive they did afterwards, but they had some guys from three four three studios on, and they kind of like broke it down. And it was really cool. They did like all the little bits of the multiplayer trailer when they was using the grappling hook and, you know, when you pick up weapons and how you like could kick over the like the energy sword by throwing a grenade. Oh, I didn't see any. I didn't see any. Oh, yeah. I get shot. Yeah. yeah. Really. It was oh. it was it was really cool. Um, and Super Mario World is the best game of all time. They uh they they also showed off some uh <laughs> they 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 also showed off some of the some of the new weapons and like kind of how the multiplayer would like work and how the pacing would be and all that like they really like broke down that like two minute trailer, um, but uh, yeah okay. man I am I am hype the hype train is the hype well, train is in full steam I am captaining and the engineer of that train well this this is this is gonna be Excited. unique though right because. If you buy this game for seventy dollars or six, I hope it's not seventy dollars, but let's just say seventy, sixty, mm-hmm. fifty. You're only buying it for the campaign because the multiplayer is free. Is you mm-hmm. don't even need Xbox Live to play the, to play Halo multiplayer. Right? That's true. You can just jump that's in, true. and they can monetize you, and they will. Well, that's anyway, that's why it's that's why it's free. You know, they're uh, they're gonna have a bunch of stuff where you can buy. I mean, you you may get some uh, you may get some skins and some some armor and whatever else for the multiplayer in your purchase. Uh, I, I'm actually, I would I would definitely bet money on that. You know, you get the Halo version, uh, the seven hour version with this this and this, and then there'll be like the premiere edition with the Halo statue and a thousand credits and and all this cool stuff and a steel book and whatever like yeah they they got all that stuff unlocked um well i guess i guess i guess that you're saying that hey 60 dollars just for the single player do you not think that's going to be enough for 70 dollars for the single player you don't think it's going to be enough for an experience this campaign better be epic it better be the best camp well, that's what they campaign. called it they called they they called it epic campaign it better be one of, when they had the two be, things side by side. They legit said epic campaign underneath it. It better so. be the most epic campaign and long too. It there needs to go. be the last of us part too long. It needs to be like 20 hours, 25 hours. Long. I think it's definitely going to hit that mark. If it's, if it's the open world that they say it's going to be, I think so. All right. I don't want to hear any more. I don't want to see any more. Just give me the <laughs> game. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and the last big thing that they showed, and I called it, it was Horizon, Forza Horizon 5. We got, it's announced, we got the release date, it's coming out November 9th, which if Halo comes out November 15th, man, what a week, right? You got I know. Forza I know. Horizon 5 and, and Halo Infinite. Well, um, did, did you think it was going to be Horizon 5 or Forza Motorsport 8? No. I thought it was going to be her. I said Horizon. I specifically said Horizon because I, I Did you? knew we would get uh, it. Yeah, I knew we would get a new mainline Horizon game. Uh, well, Horizon's the offshoot, technically. Well, the Forza series is the uh, the motorsport is the OG one, but 
Well, yeah, I, it's some it's, people. I think the level of what people love. I think people <clears throat> love the Horizon series a little bit more. I mean, I do. Though, yeah, <laughs> I love but, the off roadness of it. But um, and they and they I, did they did happen to mention that uh, Horizon Motorsport Eight is in production. Is in they works. gave a little drop yes. on that. So. Uh, we'll probably uh, but I'm see super, that next year. I'm yeah. hyped for this because I just came back from Mexico, and the setting mm-hmm. for this game is going to be in mm-hmm. Mexico, right? And they have new modes yep. that encourages uh, exploration and mini games, uh, a lot more mini games than they did in Horizon Four, right? And you the, have the stadium the... where you can go to, and you can you can specifically play uh, like mini games. And they had a custom creation tool called the Events Lab that they spent a lot of time talking about. Yeah, you can put so, jump pads down and do all these like wacky uh races and you know you can share them you can go to the go to the web and and you know play whatever you want to play so it's an extension of what you could you could do a little bit of that in four you can do a lot more of that in five which is which is awesome and it looks pretty as hell you know i just want to play in mexico i just want to drive in mexico free yeah style. man free well you style. saw you saw when they like uh they specifically had a shot like a still shot and they wanted you to think, oh, this is photorealistic, right? This is yeah. this is actual, like an actual. I uh, thought that was uh, an actual Mexico, and it was exactly. It wasn't, and then yeah. the car starts going, and you're like, oh my god, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That was that was phenomenal. Yeah, uh, man. they they definitely tricked me on that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's getting real. Come on, listen. When we get to the the PlayStation Seven, not even the six, the seven and the and the Xbox Series, you know, uh, X two, uh, the Xbox Series. The Xbox Series X2 uh, Scorpio Nine. I don't know what, what, what they would call it. I think. Uh, I think it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be super. Listen, it's gonna be. You're not gonna know. It's gonna be. Listen, real. Microsoft doesn't have the best naming, but that is far worse. Oh, okay. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna. It's gonna be <laughs> Xbox 363. Well, there's not gonna be another console. It's just all gonna be in the cloud. <laughs> no, 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 the Xbox. Xbox. That's where Xbox. Goes. Xbox 363 uh, thumbstick. It's gonna be oh that big. Oh my god! Yeah, there it's you go. Be all you go. realistic. Mm-hmm. I I am super. I am really looking forward to this. This was, to be honest, this was Forza Horizon Five was second on my most anticipated games of E3. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you know, after let's just say after E3. I was. I, really I was look forward to it. Yeah, I was. I was really surprised they didn't show Motorsport Eight. Very happy they showed Horizon Five because that's my jam. But yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right, on that note, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to get into the rest of E3. What's up? This is Lily Z from Viz Media, and you're listening to the Rated G for Gamers podcast. Hello, this is Lily Zaldivar from Viz Media, and you're listening to the Rated G for Gamers podcast. This is Lily Z from Viz Media, and you're listening to the Rated G for Gamers podcast. What's up, everyone? This is Lily Zaldivar from Viz Media, and you're listening to the Rated G for Gamers podcast. This is Lily Z from Viz Media, and you're listening to the Rated G for Gamers podcast. Hey there, everyone. This is Lily Zaldivar from Viz Media, and you're listening to the Rated G for Gamers podcast. We're back. All right, let's finish our recap of E3 2021. I want to show some love to the limited run. We all we we've done it for the last two years. We love I limited think, run. I oh, we're collectors, so we love physical media. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm always worried when I look at that Xbox event, and you know if they're gonna, you know, if, are they gonna release Halo physical? Right, like <laughs> or the multiplayer is free to play. I know. So, I always look. I always look to limited run to give me the physical editions. And they did put out, they did announce new games coming out, right? But that I was surprising. Focus, that was a first for them, I think. But I want to focus first. on two highlights for me personally. And I know you, you, you definitely, <laughs> you know, were hyped about them. That we're getting, they have a relationship with Konami. We're getting a Contra collection. Mm-hmm. Come on, mm-hmm. that was awesome. That that was awesome, mm-hmm. right? And I even said it. I said if if you know. Since we already got the Castlevania collection, they announced it <clears throat> at last year at last year's E3, and it actually pre-orders went on sale. I think in January, or February of this year. 
we they announced the contract collection is probably not going to go until until January February of next year. But oh, I yeah. mean, come on, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, Contra, the arcade, Super Contra, Contra, the North American and Japanese release, Super C, Contra 3, the Alien Wars, Operation C, Contra uh, Hardcore. Yeah, right? And the, we got all and these the European games. versions. We got we got Probotector and Super Probotector, so Yeah. Yeah, that's that's um I like that there's all the variations on there. It's a it's a I think a ten Contra set. It's all the early ones. I'm glad we have hardcore on there. Because the Genesis one, uh I never actually played yet. Really? And I hear it's yeah. fantastic. Oh, you did get it for me uh, for Christmas uh, as a Christmas gift. I did. I did because you already had uh, Castlevania. <laughs> so I, I had to do a uh, had to do a pivot. And I'm glad you brought up Castlevania because they also <laughs> brought out, they announced Castlevania Requiem, which is uh, Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, the combination uh-huh. that came out for PS4. It only came out for PS4 back in 20. 20- 14 to 2015 one of those one it of those was years. originally for the psp it was originally for the psp but it came out for last gen uh for the ps4 mm-hmm. but now they, they're bringing it out physical to the ps4 and the surprise announcement of rondo of blood for the turbo graphics cd like, yeah, yeah 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 the first, and, duo. first and probably only game for the turbo graphics cd that's the one that everybody wants that's the one that everybody loves uh it's Arguably the best in the series. It is a very good game. The best version of that. They did make a Super Nintendo one, uh, um, Dracula X, I guess, which was kind of like Rondo, which, but different. Which I which I do own the Japanese version of. Yeah, I think it's great. I don't know where the hate comes in on that game. I think it looks beautiful. I think it plays beautiful. I don't care what people say. But everyone loves Rondo, and Rondo is great. And now we get it. The sad thing is they're not going to have enough copies going to sell out like that because I, I don't think they're going to do rolling pre-orders for it if you think if they're going to have a window if you actually wake up and 10 o'clock comes and you actually are ready to buy i think you'll be able to buy trust me. i hope so i hope so uh <laughs> i think you'll be able to buy it. i think you I, know, I hope so i think you're overestimating the hype for this to be honest what no no way i do no I do. way i do you don't know how much people love Rondo. I can, I can, I can guarantee you'll be able to get it if you actually try. All right, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but that but was I like awesome. the, yeah. But I like the fact that they changed it up a little bit. Usually they have like, <laughs> a, you know, sort of not a real audience. You know, like they the, this time they had they you thought they had a real audience because they had shots of fake audience. They had, they had footage of some uh, some presentation <laughs> conference or award show and they yeah. just kept cutting to the two different clips that they had and that was it yeah it was so great. i like i like the direction they're going and, mm-hmm. and i love the comedy so well mm-hmm. let's you let's, you let's... well hold, hold on hold on because okay. you missed you missed the one more thing moment you missed the, the 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 mic drop moment at the end of the show where they said we are doing plumbers don't wear ties for the three DL. I, I said this was the big. I said this were the highlights. Yeah, okay. dude, okay. dude, that's not enough. That's, dude, I, I everyone's gonna buy highlight. it. It's gonna sell out. They even I, had one of the actresses from the game uh, to to help introduce plumbers don't wear ties. I think she was the only actress in the game. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like her and the dude. I think, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a terrible game. When they when they announced this one more thing, I had no idea what this was. Oh, I really? Did not know, I did oh, not know about this game. It was uh, it was part of that like adult game. Like that was in when Night Trap was out and Voyeur and this game. It's and... a full a uh, full motion. You know, full motion game. It's not. It's Back actually game. not even full motion. It's, it's not. It's, I, it's still graphics. Oh, God. I think I think there may be like a video at the end when you beat it, but yeah, it's like a choose your own adventure. It's terrible, Dan. But right. I'm gonna still yeah. get it. All right, and this is why I didn't want to talk about it because it wasn't a highlight. <laughs> it wasn't a highlight. It's it. it's hilarious though. Like it wasn't like, a highlight. That's the game they they like they like chose to put out. I love it. I love it. Come on, I'm almost losing my hat over here over this game. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to a real. Let's go to. Let's go to one of the big dogs. Let's go to Square. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Square, their presentation overall could have been a little bit better, but they, at least they did could have been show a lot us better. new games, right? Brand new games. Uh, and they started off with a brand new total shock to me, Guardians of the Galaxy, officially revealed. 
and release date. It's coming out October 26th. But that wasn't the biggest shock. The biggest shock was it's also coming to the Switch. It's coming to the Switch. We found that out at the Nintendo event, yeah, which was last. Great. It's it's coming out uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PS5 and Series X, but it's also coming out for the Switch. Yeah. However, if you want to play it on the Switch, it will only be streamed to the Switch, no right. physical version. Which so. have done at least in Japan, they did it with uh, Resident Evil Seven and. Um, they did it with an Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Yes. And Assassin's yes. Creed too. Yeah, those were the two. But they were but Japan exclusive. But I play Control. Uh, oh, Control America, they did too, I guess. Yeah, okay. In America, so that was, yeah. That, that was the first one they put out here. Because our internet isn't so great. Japan's internet is fantastic. But they, they managed to make it work with Control, so glad so to you, see that's coming. So what happens is, what well, at least what happened was they put out you get to play like a good slice, five, ten minutes, right? Just to see if your internet can can withstand it. And if mm-hmm. if it can, then you get to buy the game. To oh, stream. really? Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. So I played the I played like the first ten minutes of, of control, then it just mm-hmm. stopped me automatically and said, yeah. All right, now you gotta buy the game if you're Yeah, play there the you rest. go. There you go. That's that's so, that's really smart. Yeah. Uh in this game in the Guardians of the Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy game, you get to play as Star Lord, which was Peter Quinn. That's it. You Peter don't play Quill, as yeah. any of the other uh, guardians. Right? You can give you can them control them. You give yeah. Them you can give them like yeah. commands and all that. Yeah, but it's really uh, Peter's it, story. It's a brand new story in the same vein as Insomniac, mm-hmm. right? With Spider Man, where they again an Avatar, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, they're yeah. not beholden to the movies, right? So they're it's brand new, uh, brand new story. They get to have some creative freedom with it. So I'm I'm all about it. I was all for the dialogue, right? And you have dialogue options in this game, and your choice matters. Apparently, there's a little hopefully. choose your own adventure, yeah, which is hopefully, which is kind of cool. Hopefully, it matters in the sense of you know, if I pick this choice, I won't have to battle. <laughs> if I pick this choice, right, I won't right, have to do it, more it, you know, you would get a different uh, story path or whatever, and fight yeah. different monsters, yeah. Which which it seems like. It seems like it would be. Yeah, it seems like they would. They they they, they, they did say that. they did say they 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 did they didn't choose like A or B level uh, bad guys or enemies, right? Mm. They wanted to do something brand new, and they really, you know, they really dug up some 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 C level uh, bad guys from the comics that they could that's, play with that nobody would even. That's even kind of interesting that that they're doing that. I uh, I commend them. For, for going deep in the Marvel catalog, for sure. I, listen, that's interesting because no one's going to have any, I mean, I don't want to say no one, but it's not going to be a lot of people that are going to have sort of like, oh, you messed up my character, right? Mm-hmm. You messed up this bad guy because I know this bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. They have a little bit of freedom because who's going to know this 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 one-off in the comics, right? Right, right. right. Um, Mainstream-wise, no one. So... I look forward to see what they do. I was really excited. I'm probably the only one that was really excited about this game. No, I was, I, I was it. hyped for it. I was hyped um, for it. You know, graphically, is that it's, it's more of a double A game, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like a double. It's not, it doesn't look like the actual Avengers. Well, the Avengers didn't look great. No, either, yeah, that's a bad example. But, but <laughs> yeah, well, this looked a little bit worse than Avengers. But I don't know. Believe it. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I I I thought it was Avengers DLC. I thought you know? it was Avengers DLC as well when, yeah. when I was like, oh, man, Guardians DLC for the Avengers. Uh, at least they yeah. started with this, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But no, it was a standalone game coming out mm-hmm. October 26th. And then they mm-hmm. talked about the Avengers that we're going to get the, the Black Panther uh, uh, DLC. And it's going to be free, which is awesome. I wish I still played that game. Um, <laughs> it's not great, which I don't. It's not great. Which I don't. Which I don't. It's, it's, it's really good. It's not great. It's right okay. under great. I think okay. it's right under grade. I enjoyed okay. my time with it. Okay. Something that when I saw it, I thought you would be more hyped for it than anything. And mm-hmm. I think I don't. I think talking to you on the show when we did our reacts reactions uh, show, I, I think maybe you're not as hyped. But they showed a new Final Fantasy game. It's called Stranger of Paradise: Final Fantasy Origins, made by Team Ninja. Uh huh. So let me let me let me let me stop this you was right the, there. This was the Dark Souls like Final Fantasy game that was covered prior to E3. Let me let me stop you right there. Team Ninja. I don't love Team Ninja. I did love the Ninja Gaiden games one, two, and three. 
They were very good. Uh, I think one was the best. But I don't know if I necessarily want their style in a Final Fantasy game. I mean, it looked it looked like Final Fantasy VII Remake. You know, it's the story of Final Fantasy I, kind of retold. It's the end uh, of Final Fantasy I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of the story of Garland, how he becomes chaos, and you're fighting in the 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 big tower or whatever, the big uh, you know. Uh, um, in the castle. Yeah, yeah, you're in, you're in the giant castle where you end up starting the game off on. But I mean, like the main character is named Jack. He looks like a dude from the future. He looks this like the a devil may cry. Yeah, uh, it's it's got a lot of Team Ninja drip on it, so, and I don't okay. I don't like it. It's definitely not ninja gating. Mm-hmm. It's it's gets a little bit more fluid in the in the mechanics in the battle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in the attacks, it's it's a little bit stiff. It's more stiff, like Dark Souls. Okay. So that's where I would say maybe the Dark Souls comparison comes from, and it's mm-hmm. definitely dark. Yeah, <laughs> no, no I've color, seen no play. drab. It's it's yeah. super dark. Um, there's no color whatsoever in this game. Uh, I played the demo it's exclusive to the ps5 to my right, knowledge right otherwise and, i would have would have jumped in on it and it, it's definitely gave me dark soul vibes except for it this is what i wanted right this is dark souls if dark souls had an easy mode because they definitely do give you a uh, difficulty level uh, setting mm-hmm. where you can set it to you know easy normal or hard mm-hmm. and i put it on easy and it was still you know kind of grindy and you know grindy for a stiff a stiff attack type of game. Mm-hmm. I could see where Dark Souls can be really hard. Yeah. Um, well, the they, I mean, they give I, you I, options where you can sort of go around mm-hmm. certain battles, which, sure. which I like. Yeah. And yeah. you have a team. You have a team. It's not just you. At least for the slice of the demo, it's you know you have a team of three. Yeah. Uh, with, so I don't think you can control the other two guys, but they fight alongside you. They do. Correct. Yeah. Um. And I and I saw it's it's like a looter shooter without the guns. You know, you get weapon after weapon and and armor piece after armor piece. And you constantly keep switching things out, switching things out, because you keep getting better armor. So it's, you know, it's a little little Diablo-esque, I guess, in a way. Um, Max, which, some, will you will you try it? Like, the game comes out. It's I mean, I have to get a PS5. <laughs> well, I, I don't think the it'll linchpin. be. I think, I think it'll be multi-platform. I don't think this is going to be a PS5 exclusive. I hope it's so. It's $70. Will you buy it? Will you, would you try it out? Because it's fun. I know you're a big Final Fantasy fan. I mean, I mean, there's just some things that look kind of cool about it, for sure. You know, it, it feels a little less like a Final Fantasy and more like a Team Ninja game. But I think there's enough there to get me into it. So, yes. Okay. The answer the answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's end with the conferences with a heavy hitter. <laughs> and that's Nintendo. That's right. That's right. Nintendo, Nintendo and Microsoft are going at it. Nintendo and Microsoft, they were the two heavy hitters since Sony wasn't here. Mm-hmm. We don't know what Sony's going to do. Hopefully, they'll do something in the next week or two. But Nintendo had a really good conference. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. I thought it could have, I thought it could have been a little bit better because there were so many games that were rumored to be coming out. Right, like we didn't get any Donkey Kong. We didn't get the new Donkey Kong game. Just like last year, we didn't get the the racing uh, Star Fox game. We thought we were going to get. Yeah. So I thought we would have a little bit more, right? Mm-hmm. But we did get a new Smash character from Tekken. I know you were happy about that. I know you're yeah. a big Tekken fan. That's good news. At, and we didn't get we didn't get Metroid Prime Four, but we did get a new Metroid game, which mm-hmm. is actually you know Metroid Five if you think about it, in the mainline 2D series um, called Metroid Dread, which mm-hmm. was a sh- you know that came out of left field. I mean, there were rumors about that, but I don't think anybody took that too seriously but it was true call it metroid dread you pointed it out to me during the reacts video oh yeah uh, rumors, rumors from as, as as far back as 2005 yeah, yeah. That this has been in, you know sort of in development and stopped mm-hmm. you know for the last like 15 16 years but we it's 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 ready for showtime it's coming out on october 8th it's coming with the amiibo mm-hmm. samus amiibo and mm-hmm. uh, emmy amiibo emmy is a new sort of uh i don't want to say i don't know if i want to say villain in the game right well it's certainly we trying to kill you <laughs> it's certainly trying to kill you it's a robot so i would it's say it's to, a villain <laughs> well we don't know how it will turn out right ultimately it could be maybe 
it could be maybe an ally you don't know depending on how to, how you play the game or how at the, game at the end of the day the end. maybe yeah. yeah yeah but it's a direct this game is a direct sequel to the game boy advance metroid fusion that came out mm-hmm. uh, 19 years ago right and they made it a point to say this is the end of samus's mainline story and i know what you're saying you're thinking to yourself but we still have metroid prime 4 right how can that be the end of samus's story well the prime games uh take place in between Met- the original metroid and nes and super metroid on the snes they are mostly mm-hmm. prequels mm-hmm. i don't know what the metroid prime 4 is going to be but they did say that this will be the end of samus's story mm-hmm. so who knows what that means going forward for the metroid series oh. right well, they already, I mean, you can retcon on anything. I mean, they, they already killed off Lara Croft back in uh, Tomb Raider 5 or whatever, right? Annihilation, I think, maybe? And they just kept making games that were all prequels to that. And it was like, ah, oh, it's fine. She can still go on adventures. <laughs> well, do, let me ask you a question. We didn't get Metroid Prime 4, which I knew you you, you were super hyped for. You said you would be disappointed if they don't show it. They didn't show it. I mean, it. I, I thought they this, were. But we got does this... Does this make up for it? Oh, 100%. Come on now. Any wow. Metroid is good Metroid. Unless it's Other M. <laughs> Other M which, is terrible. Which in the which timeline takes... Game. In the timeline takes right... Be, is right before uh, Fusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah. Other M is right before Fusion, which is Fusion. The 2002 game, story-wise, storyline-wise, uh, is sort of up-to-date story. Right. right, right. Not the Prime games. Right, yeah. Like, I own other room. Probably never play it, but... I'm going to play it, team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, of course I'm hype, man. Like, any any Metroid is good Metroid. Because, I mean, you've said it before. I, You know, I tried to defend the franchise. It's not the best-selling franchise that they have, right? Pokemon does better. Mario does better. Zelda does better. It's a lot of games that do better than Metroid. But... The fans love it, and the fans want it, and I think not in Japan, not in Japan, not as not as much in Japan, yeah, not as much in Japan, but in in America, fans go like you know, fans go bend over backwards for Metroid. So, I think it's going to do well. I mean, it does well enough for them to come out and say, "Hey, we're doing Metroid Five, and also Metroid Prime Four is still in production." So, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I'm really, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it so much the special edition and amiibo are already sold out pre-orders so i'm going to a little you know inside baseball behind the scenes i get to work from home full time now just like you i don't Mm -hmm. have to go to the office anymore but i'm willing to go to the office october 8th because i you know my office is close to the nintendo store in the city in new york literally like right there <laughs> well it's, close. it's three avenues down which is not right there but it, yeah. it's a good, you can get there on a lunch break yeah it, it's a good 10 to, yeah it's a good 10 minute walk mm-hmm. i'm gonna work that i'm going to work that day just so i get the special edition in the mm-hmm. amiibo because you know mm-hmm. the nintendo store will be fully stocked That's unlike right. best buy and gamestop and right. amazon which mm-hmm. is already sold out so i want the special edition i want the art book i want i want the the I want the the hard case, and I definitely want the amiibo because you know yeah, I'm man. all about the amiibo. But that's not the biggest news from Nintendo from the Nintendo Direct at E3 2021. The biggest news was something that we knew that they had to show, or if they didn't show, we would all ride in the streets, or at least online. We would ride online, and that is Zelda Breath of the Wild two. It two Zelda Breath of the Wild dose. Mm-hmm. I don't, if I knew how to say it in French, I would say it in French. Duh. That's, you know. Duh. Okay. All right. All right. Let, let's rewind. Go. Take two. Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Duh. Duh. There we go. Y- close. Close enough. All right. Oh, it's close, close enough. enough. I'm not going to do a third take. <sighs> they did show it. It was their one more thing. Because mm-hmm. I was a little scared. They, they talked about Skyward Sword. Right? We already know it's coming out next month. We got the Amiibo. Didn't know if they were going to show it or not. And then they had their one more thing. We got a window, which was awesome, coming out in mm-hmm. 2022. Yep. We had more questions than answers about this, right? High rules in the sky, apparently, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Link has some type of cybernetic arm. 
that came out of nowhere. It looks like the Sheikah Slake took over his arm because he can he control it with his arm. I don't mm-hmm. know what's going on, right? It looks like he can phase through the ground, at least at least the ground that's in the sky, right? Mm-hmm. Like you phase through it. I don't know if that's something that he could do everywhere, or is that's you know that's his way of teleporting to the sky, right? And we never see his face in yeah. any of the gameplay. We got gameplay. But we never see his face. A little face. bit, yeah. Yeah. And and I if you contrast this with the last trailer they put out, which was I think two years ago, the little teaser, vastly different. It was him and him and Zelda walking through a cave with the torch, you remember? And it was like It was very dark too. Yeah. in a cave. Yeah. Um in this this trailer starts with Zelda falling. Mm-hmm. Right? It looks like they were in a cave in the same mm-hmm. setting and she's falling. And then uh, the castle is extend- extending into the sky, ascending yeah. into the sky with a bunch of, Atlant- you know, Hyrule is going in the sky. Not all of Hyrule, but some of Hyrule. Mm-hmm. So I have more questions than answers. And if it's coming out in 2022, that just means I I, I don't think this is going to be March. I don't think this is going to be a spring game, honestly. Oh, um, really? Mm-hmm. It would be a spring game if we didn't have the zombie apocalypse. Like, you know, sort of coming to an end, kind of. It feels mm-hmm. like it, right? Like, I'm going mm-hmm. places, and you don't have to wear a mask. I was in a supermarket today, and, like, half the people had masks, oh. like me, and the other half didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm fully vaccinated, and I yeah, still yeah. wear a mask, mm-hmm. uh, just because I ain't taking any chances. But <laughs> uh, but that's in America. We don't know how it is. In Japan, it's still shut down, kind of. A lot of. of other countries are not doing as well as we are, so, so you know. So, if, if there was no zombie apocalypse, I would say this is coming out in March. But because of that... And because they've been so vague and we didn't get a big Zelda uh, celebration for the 35th anniversary. We did get the Game & Watch, which I'm... Game & Watch is pretty gonna, awesome, man. We got this. Skyward buy. Sword's coming. Skyward Sword's coming. We got this. And they showed Breath of the Wild 2. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to be a holiday game. Honestly, it could be. This is going you know. to be a September. I think September 2022. Mm-hmm. This is, this, um, and we're going to see more about it in E3 2022. I'm up. A- a hundred percent hoping for a early spring release so I can play it over the summer and beat it, put it down and get ready for all the Christmas games. That's, that's what I want. I want it to be like the original breath of the wild experience. I can just play it on its own. Unfortunately, I think that's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, the other thing they didn't, they didn't show either was the uh, subtitle, right? They're calling it breath of the wild too. And they not going to be breath of the wild too. It's going to be so we don't, well, we don't know. We don't know. It could be Breath of the Wild. It, it's funny enough. It could be the longest subtitle known to man. It's Legend, a possibility. The Legend, of, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild to something, something, something. Right. right? But I think I think that kind of like 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 Breath of the Wild kind of lets you know, especially when you start playing the game, that you can do whatever you want. It's open world. You can go where you want. Right. Skyward Swords in the sky. Uh, Twilight Princess about, has like the two worlds. How about this? How about this? How about this? The Legend of Zelda breath of the sky yeah they, they're going to be a little more maybe a little more clever than that because you can be in the sky anyway just like you know i mean sure anywhere you want sure. but but i think they i think they did that on purpose i think they purposely didn't tell you the name of the game so no they did they know they actually have uh, gone on record and said that they didn't uh announce mm-hmm. the subtitle the name of the game because they don't want to give away a lot of the stuff that's in it it's still a yeah. work in progress as far as yeah. the title so but that was E3. Those are the highlights. I, I Those are the big 15 games from E3 2021. And, I mean, you know, as a tradition, we usually tally up the predictions. Yep. Uh, it's a little different. Let's, it's a little different this year because not everything is happening at the same time. So that's right. We were holding off on closing the window on some of these predictions because they could still get revealed at the big EA event or the Square, uh, the PlayStation event. Which so is... we did say we did say between now. Well, we know the we know the the EA event is like 
I think July 23rd. Yeah, it's happening right. next month. So yeah. Yeah. So between now and July, I, I would say the I would say the the measuring stick would be July 23rd. Right. Come mm-hmm. on, Sony has to do something between now and the end mm-hmm. of July. Mm-hmm. Right. If they do something in August, maybe we we say it doesn't count. I don't know. We haven't decided yet. But that's true. Let's yeah. Go yeah. Let's, what's the window? <laughs> yeah. What's the window? Right. If the, <laughs> but let's 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 go off of what we do know. Right. Off of Nintendo, some third parties, and Xbox. So I did say. There was going to be a new Forza game, and I think I even specifically said Forza Horizon game, but you, I knew it was going to be a Forza game. You may game. have, but 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 your prediction as written says new Forza game, so that counts. Yes. yes. That counts. And um, I, was, I was totally wrong about Wolfenstein 3. That was a which, big miss. Which, honestly, I think wasn't a bad prediction, because, I mean, it's, you know... Bethesda. It's been a long time. It's been a long it's been time. A little bit, this is yeah. this is a this is this is definitely probably a 2022 prediction for right. for E3 with Microsoft, right. where we'll see yet. So, so my uh my two predictions were uh, the new Fable was going to be shown and it oh, wasn't shown on stage. I knew it was nowhere near ready. Well, I mean, neither 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 is uh, Elder Scrolls Six. That didn't stop them from showing an animated JPEG. A logo. <laughs> a logo. Yeah, Metroid Prime Four. I mean, come on, that that doesn't stop anybody else. It's like, oh, look at this game that's coming out in possibly five years. Um, my other my other prediction though from from uh, Microsoft did come true. At least two studio acquisition game showings during the presentation. So we got them. We got them. Nope, we you got. Um, You're right. You're right about we got, that. We got Redfall, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we definitely got. I mean, Starfield. That that was a brand. That was a that was a new one. We didn't know if they were going to show it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they definitely showed a lot of first part, a new first party studio games. So, yeah. And yeah. and I was super hyped for them. I'm super hyped for them. I I got to be honest. As a side note, I know we already talked about the conferences, but I am more hyped for out of anything with xbox other than forza because forza is my number one thing that i'm hyped for mm-hmm. psychonauts 2 like we got to yeah. end up end up about psychonauts 2 so yeah, i'm yeah. super hyped for that even though i'm buying it on the ps4 just mm-hmm. because come on come on i gotta have that ps4 box with the xbox uh studios logo on it yeah that's the only reason i want to buy it <laughs> so let's switch gears and talk about uh nintendo mm-hmm. i knew I felt it in the bones. We were not going to get any Switch Pro talk before or at E3. Uh-huh. All right. It was pretty. You're I was right. a little nervous. I was a little nervous. I was like, I was like total recall with the guy took the pill, put it in his mouth, and he started sweating. <sighs> yep. Yep. I was total like, recall uh-oh. nervous. I was total recall uh-huh. nervous because I, I was like, no, that's not a good business decision in my view. Mm-hmm. Someone, you know, I was like, that's not a good business decision because you don't want to stifle something that's been selling really well especially if it's not coming out anytime soon it's not if it's mm-hmm. coming out in the fall you're stifling sales for the next like three to four months and because everyone's going to want to wait to buy the better version of the switch yeah right so the switch pro console will not be before or at e3 and i was correct we still don't know anything about the switch pro so uh what happens if between now and when sony and uh EA it's not the direct. It's not the direct. You made it very clear. It well, wasn't there E3 it's still direct. E3 time, isn't it? Isn't it still it E3 time? It wasn't their E3 direct. No, uh-huh. you didn't say that. No, no, you made this I'm big I'm just saying, thing. I'm just saying. You E3 made this window. big. No, 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 no. You made this big. When we did the predictions and I said something about the uh, the Treehouse event, you said, no, it. Our well, you were you were you were saying it was going to count. We had to go back to the tape. So if something yeah. happened at the treehouse, you would go to the mat for that, and <laughs> I, we would we would. We but you would, know what? We, we don't have to... have to throw it. We'd have to throw the whole thing out because we wouldn't come it, to it, a conclusion. So but, don't give me. But any of it that. wasn't. It wasn't at the don't direct. Give me any it, of that. it wasn't at the direct. No, you're 100 percent right. 100. percent But right. I don't even think that's going to happen. I think this is going to be. If they do show it, I think <clears> they would show it at TGS, right? Tokyo Game Show. Or around TGS time, which is like around PAX East or oh, well, PAX East, PAX yeah, West I mean, time. That's, that's the thing, too, with, with, with all of this stuff. The Japanese-centric companies, the or companies that are in Japan, uh, love TGS and want to save some stuff for TGS. So that's why your Capcoms, your Square Enixes, and your Bandai oh. Namcos had pretty poor showings overall. Because it was like, well, we got well, some honestly, other stuff. Just, just go ahead I- and wait. 
honestly, my other prediction was wrong um, <clears throat> because I it, it, this may be a TGS thing, and mm-hmm. I hope not. I hope this is a I hope this is a Game Awards thing. But Bayonetta three was not announced. Oh yeah, you didn't hear miss. anything about Bayonetta. Big 3. miss. That was a that was a big miss. And which I which I, I almost thought like slam dunk. You know, it's about honestly. I thought this was I thought this was a slam dunk, and I thought the Switch Pro being announced before e3 or at e3 was gonna happen i was like well, oh, I, was, I was on a limb on that one some people were saying some analysts are saying some people were rumoring behind the scenes that they're having some trouble with this game and it may not come out but i don't know i mean i don't know if it's actually something's coming out but... will it be a good game i don't know but they're going to complete the trilogy oh i don't know i don't know maybe not they're going to complete the trilogy. maybe not i mean it's been what but... three years since we last heard about it and but nothing. I wasn't confident in this next one, and this ended up being a slam dunk and a new Smash oh. character. Oh, come I, on. I, come I on. Thought, I didn't think this was going to be a slam dunk, I'll be Dan, honest. Dan, get out of here. They kicked off the conference with it. I come know, on. I know, I know, I know. They we kicked got, off I think, the conference. I think we had like two two characters left, right? And uh, I think one or we got two, one more yeah, left. yeah, yeah. I didn't think they were going to, I think, I thought maybe they would hide, They would hold oh this. Oh, my God. I really did. Oh my God! No way! No way! This I was really did. this was this was the prediction. I I would have bet money on this prediction for you. So, uh, all right. so conversely, where you said the Switch Pro is not going to be shown, and you said before, and also at E3, they did not show it before E3. So I was wrong about that when all the analysts were saying that they wanted to focus on games, right? And that was going to be the main focus of the show. But they were saying that there's probably going to be a drop. They're going to announce it ahead of time to, to kind of get it out there, get everybody excited, and then say, like, hey, Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be enhanced for the uh, the new Switch XL or whatever it is. So that didn't come true. Uh, so I got a miss there. But my second prediction, with the Zelda release window and or a trailer, which I should get two points for because both of those things came true, <laughs> I was correct about hedge, that. But... Go ahead. You well, I'm just, you know, while. Okay. we got we got a release window and we got an epic trailer. So there you go. And then my third prediction about the new Donkey Kong game, no 2D game, no 3D game, nothing. So you got nothing. Yeah. And so, I think that's well, about that's about all we can say right now. Everything else is still kind of open. That's about it. Right mm-hmm. now, everything really still is open. Um, it's still sort of E3 season, right? I mean, uh, summer games fest i don't think is over is over he said it's gonna last a month yep right so we yep. still got another week and a half as of this show a recording of the show and uh you know ign's summer of games is still going on i think that's going on until honestly around yeah i don't know it could go on ever i mean the summer ends in september right i right. doubt they're gonna yeah. keep doing this until september i so, mean if if you got stuff to show right if you got yeah, you know, stuff developer to show. deep dives. If you got new games, like I'm, I'm, I am definitely here for it. But I want to focus. I want to focus on what we do have. Mm-hmm. And out of all the games shown at E3, what was your most anticipated game at E3? Oh. from E3, so far, so far. Oh, it's I. It, this is probably going to continue. But Zelda Two, Breath of the Wild Two, super oh, okay. hyped for it. I'm ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you. I'm super mm-hmm. hyped for Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. You were over the moon about it. That is. Not I was surprising. super hype about this. I yeah. like the dialogue. I like having dialogue options. I like the fact that I play is uh, you know Star Lord and I get to control all the other characters and it's a single player experience. I'm not gonna stream it on the Switch. They'll so get the mm-hmm. hell out of here. I'm gonna get this for the PS5. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they have Spider Man DLC at some point. Oh my god. <laughs> They're, they're not. They're yeah. not doing a crossover like that. Oh. Yeah, but you, you never know. They may have. They they may have it. Holding out hope. Haven't even put it out so. for the Avengers yet. And you think they're going to put it out for Guardians? Uh uh-uh. Yeah. When it when it comes out for the Avengers, uh-uh. it could be out for everything. I, I don't. I don't know if that's happening. All right. So, what, Dave? What was your bet? Who had the best E three conference? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it it, it really. And it really was clearly only, one winner. Go ahead. It was really only two it contenders. Was, it was really yeah. It was two t- contenders with one winner. Go ahead. Right. Nintendo, Nintendo, and Xbox really had the best showings. Uh, even though I did love the day of the devs, and I did love um, the uh, the Jeff Keighley presentation, the like Summer Games Fest. I was pretty hype about that. There was some good stuff in there, but I gotta give it. I gotta give it to the Mean Green Machine Xbox. Nintendo. 
Oh, Xbox. Oh, come on. Xbox. Really? You giving it to Xbox? Dude, they you had um they had they had Forza, they had Halo, they had uh, Psychonauts 2, right? They kicked it off with Starfield. And they had new IPs to show as well. They had they had the Redfall game and a couple other things. It was it there there was almost nothing in that in that in that conference that was filler. I'm gonna I'm gonna say my issue with Xbox <clears throat> is the same issue I have every year. And it's not that they don't have anything to show. It's how they show it. Okay. Mm. How they present it. That's always my issue. I, I I take that in my formula or my calculations or when I say who had the best press conference, who impressed mm-hmm. me the most mm-hmm. at E3. And Microsoft, they have the games. They just didn't present it in the best way possible that they could have, in my view. You started with Halo because that's the most talked about thing since last E3, mm-hmm. right? How does Halo look? How does Halo look? You started with Halo. Redfall is your, your brand new IP from Arcane Studios, which everyone trusts, and they're saying they're they're sort of the insomniac for Microsoft, right? You have that new IP you show in the middle of the conference, and then you just do the mic drop. You do do the mic drop, and you show Starfield, right? Starfield. People Starfield don't... was a bit of a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, a people don't know. People don't. People didn't know if it was going to be at here or not. They don't know if it's ready or not. We're all going off of Jason Schreier. We don't know if that's a rumor or not. Well, we still don't right? know what what state it's in, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> we did. So, we did get to see it. It, you had a lot of meat that you could have shown during the press conference. And then just one more thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Starfield, right? Like this thing mm-hmm. that you everybody's mm-hmm. been asking for. Let's give you just a little bit more. Another taste. Because all they did was give us a taste. We don't know what this game is. All right? And it showed 2022 and then curtains, then the curtains close. And that's well, it. Well, well, I'll tell you this, right? The presentation, the spectacle and all that. It certainly makes for a better show, but at yes. the end of the day, the thing that matters to me is the content, right? And Xbox, I think, brought the content in that case. So they had a lot of. Stuff. I, I think Nintendo brought the content mm-hmm. and gave me a better sort of a better show. And they start off with a Smash character, right? We know Tekken, the crossover Tekken and Smash Brothers. We get Life is Strange, the remastered, mm-hmm. uh, and Life is Strange Three coming in September. That was a total shock to me, right? That's I can I can see myself playing Life is Strange since it's not really an interactive type of game mm-hmm. on the Switch. Um, if it's obviously if it's going to have a, a physical edition, I'm going to want to buy it there. You, you know, um, you know, it's going to be download though. You're going to put the oh, cartridge in. You're going to have to download stuff. Well, well, Life is Strange <laughs> three. I don't know about the remaster. Remastered, they probably have the first one and download the second one. Oh but, yeah, if even yeah. Yeah, uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. They did. They did not be. They weren't totally transparent with that because they 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 showed it on the Switch and it definitely didn't look as good. I mean, it wasn't no. a great looking game to begin with, but it definitely looked like a a, a slight upgrade from a Wii version of a game. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's coming out October twenty sixth on the Switch, but they didn't say it was streaming. Right? They didn't they didn't mention that part, so I was a little fooled on that. We got mm-hmm. the Monkey Ball collection essentially, right? The it's not called that, but that's exactly what it is. Super Monkey mm-hmm. Ball uh Banana Banana Mania. I mean Metroid Metroid five. We got a new two D Metroid coming out this year. We don't have to wait. We can wait for Metroid Prime four, but we don't well, have to wait we for gotta the wait next a few Metroid months, game. But it is yeah. it is right around the corner. We got a new Cruisin' Blast game. Well, it's a port from an uh, actual arcade, but who goes to arcade? So it's going to be brand new to everyone else. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, Monster Hunter. We got a new WarioWare game. Doom Eternal expansion. Well, Doom Eternal and the expansion. Uh, we already know about Mario plus Rabbids. Ad- Advance Wars. Everyone went crazy for that. Game & Watch. The Zelda Game & Watch, which we just talked yeah, about. In Breath I mean, of the they, Wild 2. They were neck the and neck. The mic drop. Breath of the Wild 2. They were neck and neck. They were both neck and neck. I have to say, like, you go either way. I mean, I, I kind of waffled back and forth. I almost picked Nintendo based, over Xbox, but based I got to give it to my boys in green. Based on based based on what they shown, they were neck and neck. Like, Microsoft, Nintendo were right here. But the Nintendo but, had better pacing and presentation, yeah. yeah. I yeah, had to yeah. give the slight edge. Yeah, I, I, could, I, could definitely, I could definitely agree with that. I could definitely I agree give, with that. I give the slight edge to Nintendo. Yeah, so. yeah. So they were the, they right. were the highlights. They they were the that was that that was the cream, it was the cream on the icing, the icing on the cake. So, all right. So that's it for our E three coverage. That's mm-hmm. oh man, it's, thank God, four it's shows, books, baby. Technically, uh, yeah. we did four shows. Next week we go back to our regular. 
Next week we go back to our regularly regular scheduled program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got our we got our games of the half year coming up, so that's going to be interesting. Oh yeah, that's right. What mm-hmm. game takes the cake? That's right. That's right. So uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's episode two seventy uh, two seventy seven in the books. All right. We want to uh, want to thank you guys for listening to the show, liking, commenting, doing all the good stuff that you guys do. Uh, if you want to interact with us, and we know that you do, you can find us on. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Rated G for Gamers. Also, we are part of the Gaming Podcast Alliance. You can check out all of the fine podcasts featured on there at GamingPodcastAlliance.com if you're looking for more gaming goodness. So, please listen, like, rate, review, and subscribe. And as always, keep gaming. Keep gaming.